So the final quadrant of the figure, in which plot do I want, is quantitative versus categorical. We want to compare the data in each group. This is done by considering the shape, location, spread and outliers. Shape is easiest to see with histograms. These scatter plots illustrate some of the things that you might consider. First, how many peaks? If it has two, we call it bimodal, while just one is unimodal. Next, is it symmetric or not? If I draw a line down the middle, does the left look like a reflection of the right? If yes, then it's symmetric. If no, then it's skewed. Finally, if it's skewed, is it left or right skewed? Looking at these plots, you can see the first one's left skewed. The bottom left points to the left, while the other is right skewed. The bottom right points to the right. This is hard to do just with box plots. Often, using multiple visualizations allows us to see the patterns better. Next, we have location. Box plots are good for this one. The line in the middle of each coloured rectangle is the median. Here are box plots of city fuel efficiency for each manufacturer in the MPG dataset. I've ordered them by medium fuel efficiency. We can see that Honda cars have the highest fuel efficiency, while Lincoln cars have the lowest. On to spread. The height of the coloured rectangle in a box plot is the interquartile range, which is a measure of spread. It's defined as the difference between the first and the third quartiles. Remember, we talked about these in section one. Here are the box plots ordered by interquartile range. We can see that Toyota has the largest and Mercury has the smallest. Finally, outliers. These are points that stick out from the rest of the data. Box plots have a cool way of pointing these out. They're the dots that appear above or below the box plot. R defines outliers to be points which are more than one and a half times the interquartile range outside the upper or lower quartiles. In this plot, we have potential outliers for Mercury, Honda, Volkswagen and Chevrolet. So what do we do with them? We do not remove them. I repeat, we do not remove them. We only change them if they've been entered incorrectly, otherwise we leave them in. They're interesting data points. So that's it. Shape, location, spread and outliers. Think of it as a checklist for making sure you have covered everything. It also helps when talking to a statistician. Not that you would ever want to do that, of course.